every day funeral director. We can come in here every morning. We can be a lot of jobs and things to do, but that can change at a moment's notice. The phone could ring, or the whole three of them could ring, and they could be funerals. That somebody says, look, somebody's died, I need to do an arrangement. So therefore, everything has to be resorted and worked out so that that person is accommodated. Um, that's reality. Funeral directors, Jeff speaking. Yes, good morning. Yep, sure, sure. No, we're certainly uh, we're certainly uh, able to help. Um, <clears throat> sorry, just bear with me. Yes, uh, yes, it's about two thirty, two thirty morning. No, no, that's fine. That's not a problem. That's quite okay. Um, which nursing home were you calling from? That's on Main North Road. That's correct. Now, could I just um, just ask the name of the uh, the gentleman that's passed away? Now, do you have any on your records there in the, at the nurses station? Do you have any um, next of kin and her first name? Dulce. Right. Okay. My name's Jeff. I'm a funeral director, and I've just completed being on call 24 hours a day over the weekend. It's now. Monday morning, I'm heading into work, which means first you've got to survive the weekend. We weren't too busy, had a few phone calls and uh, met with a few families and just organised some arrangements for their, uh, for their family members. So it's going to be a busy week? I probably won't be busy, but uh, there'll be, uh, be things going on all the time because we still don't know what's going to happen today yet. What are some popular myths or... Um, beliefs that people have about people who work in funerals, like that, um, like stereotypes or something like that. Stereotypes are uh, probably like, uh, for instance, we either live in little dark holes and come out when there's a job needs to be done. <laughs> I think is what some people's perception is. I think largely people just don't know. That's how they make up their own minds. But I think Hollywood has got a lot to answer for that. Like six feet under. Absolutely. Have you seen that show? Absolutely, it's a... Uh, is that a favourite? Well, my impression of it is, if I can use the term, it's a load of tripe. What's the biggest difference between a TV show and or reality? I think uh, the TV show really is presented in such a way that it provides the viewer with exactly what they want to see. All the misconceptions, really. Getting into the industry, it's not something that you can just go and do. It's not like there's a training scheme where you can go and get trained to do it and then get the job, for instance, like a uh, office worker or mechanic or something like that. What inspired me to get into it, I think, came from an inbuilt thing inside me, just to want to be with people, just to want to help people in hard times. And I didn't wake up one day and realise, wow, I want to be a funeral director. No, it was a case of I had this drive to actually be working with people, to care for them. My first day at work was like a slap in the face. I'd uh, seen a little bit of the funeral home, I'd seen the office, I'd seen some of the interview rooms when I was uh, experiencing my job interview with the employer and the manager. However, when I started work there and then started to actually see behind the scenes and get a little bit more involved, it was very very confronting. It forced me to look at my own sense of mortality. Dealing with death every day is, uh, is complicated. It doesn't mean it's hard. What it means is that everyone deals with death differently. Some people find that they just freeze up and just don't know what to do. Some people just seem very matter of fact and almost running on autopilot. Basically, uh, death takes us beyond what we know from our normal experiences. I think the best thing is just being with people. I guess you have to be a people sort of person. But uh, my greatest passion, I think, working in this industry 
is simply being there for the people that in their time of need. We need to be close enough to the family to gauge their sense of need and where they're coming from and what they're trying to say as they're expressing themselves. At the same time, you can't be too close that you don't remain objective. And so you also have to remain separated enough that your objectivity can serve them. Otherwise, we can get emotional and it doesn't serve anyone any good if you do. No, not a lot, not a lot. There's often only one or maybe two people in a funeral home that does have an embalmer's licence. Uh, but it is a skill that is uh, needed Absolutely. I think I would like to continue being a funeral director. I don't want to become just one or the other. But I know that there will be a, a shift in time, there will be a shift from one to the other, perhaps more so. However, I would still like to be able to be involved with the family, but at the same time, become involved perhaps more so in the mortuary as well. I've been working in here since 1986. No, November 86, yes. So what made you start work as a mortician? Um, Mr Forky hmm? asked me if I'd like to work for him. So what's the best thing about your job? The best thing about it is receiving something that's not good yeah. and making something really good of it. Huh. I learned years and years ago I had a really bad case. It really upset me. It was a, a male and that person fell on a big five foot saw and they were a mess and it really, really upset me. And from that moment on, I said to myself, I'm not going to look at what I have, I'm going to look at what I want. And from that time on, I walk in through that door, I do my job, walk out the door and go home. And that way, I don't have any hassles with it. Why do you continue to be a funeral director or like a mortician after all this time? I really enjoy it. I, I, what, what it is, is when I was the funeral director, I used to say to people, they would say to me, if only I'd have done this or only done that, I would say to them, you can't have if onlys. If onlys are a fragment of your imagination. You have to deal with reality. I deal with reality every day. I deal with people that are a shell. And for the family to come in and see a person that is at peace, they look good, um, they can feel comfortable with it, they can go away with good memories. After the funerals, the funeral director will come and say to me, oh, they thought the person was really good. They really were really happy with it. That to me speaks volumes mm. of the type of work that I do. Yes. And that gives me great pleasure. Um, people will think that uh, we're macabre or uh, way out, but we're just like anybody else. We're doing a job and that job is, is making somebody that doesn't look good to make them look good.